and welcome to Karate Combat, where you are going to see some of the best fights, not just on this world, but any other that we can think of. Welcome to our apocalyptic wasteland. My name is Josh Palmer, and I'm joined pitside tonight by none other than Bas Rutten. And Bas, we are surrounded by destruction, and we've got more coming right up. I just beat the biggest guy here. This guy? No, 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 that was the prize. We're going to take that puppy home with me. You know, the biggest guy, but guess what? Gravity on Earth is much stronger, so we are much stronger here. Don't worry. I love it. We're here, the crowd are here. Let's see how we're gonna get the fighters here. Our fighters will arrive in this dimension via this very portal. And when they do, it'll be the first time that they set eyes on their opponent. It'll also be the first time that they get and feel the energy from this incredible live crowd. And that is the moment that the adrenaline will start rushing through their veins. They're gonna need to contain their emotions and stay focused though, because from the moment they enter our karate combat pit, there is no going back. So let me tell you a little bit about our specialized pit here. It's 6.5 meters by 6.5 meters. And you may have noticed the 45 degree angle wall behind me. Fighters can use that wall to their advantage and you may see them push off against it for a flying kick. We are gonna be bringing you three three minute rounds and we adhere to the 10 point must system. There are no elbows and no knees allowed. And we have a five second takedown rule, which means if a fighter takes their opponent to the ground, they're allowed to rain punches down upon them for a full five seconds from an upright position until you'll see the referee stand both fighters back up. Which is a rule I kind of like, because if I had my back to the mat and was being punched repeatedly in the face, I'm figuring five seconds probably feels like quite a long time. Welcome back, pit side, where we can survey all of tonight's action. Let's take a look at the three fights coming right up. Top of the card tonight, that title eliminator, Luis Roca, the Pitbull, taking on the mad Frenchman, Ilias Mardi. Before that, we're going to see uh, Greek military member Stefano Rapakos take on the Black Diamond, Daniel Viveros. And in our opening bout tonight, Bruno Assis, the White Dragon, is going to take on Hungarian qualifier Gergu Horvath and Bass. All of our fights tonight are in the 67 kilo category. Oh. Yes, nice. good, good fights. Let's take a look at the main event tonight. Of course, that title eliminator. Whoever wins is going to get that chance at that gold belt. The Pitbull, more experienced, Luis Roca, taking on the mad Frenchman, Ilias Mardi. Yeah, you pronounced his name correctly, Roca. So without butchering his name, he asked us to pronounce it with an R. Well, he trains with the Pitbull brothers. And if you don't know the Pitbull brothers, trust me, that's a good team. And he also told us that he's never shown his real power tonight. He thought this was the day to show <laughs> his real power. Now, of course, his opponent, Mardi, thinks a whole different ball game. He is the madman as they call him. He's trained by a madman also Davey Donut. This guy is fast lightning speed and he's going to try to take advantage of that in order to take support down. The solo is harsh of Pitbull. Power, he said that's going to be an edge oh, Lance is spinning back into the body. Je vais combattre contre Luis Rocha qui est plus puissant que moi. Mais moi, ma, ma spécialité c'est la vitesse. Para me enfrentar nesse momento, eu estou num momento muito forte, muito bem preparado. A derrota na minha última luta me deixou muito sedento por uma vitória. Moi, j'ai deux victoires mon actif. J'espère avoir avoir une troisième, être invaincu pour aller ensuite aller chercher la ceinture. Ça va être difficile, mais moi, j'ai confiance en mon cardio, en ma vitesse. Il a beau être puissant, mais je vais lui enlever l'électricité au premier round. Et on doit quitter pour rencontrer la victoire. Before that, we've got former Greek amphibious special forces, Stefano Rapakos. He's taking on the Black Diamond, Daniel Viveros, who's looking for his first win in the pit. Yeah, Rapakos well, worked hard on stamina and technique, and those are two very important things. I mean, come on, technique, you want to look good while you knock somebody out. The stamina, of course, you want to keep doing it over and over again. And Viveros, he said that he only trained with three people. And I said, maybe that could be a problem. He said, no, that's not going to be a problem. I'm going to use my reach advantage, my two-inch reach advantage in my hands and my three-inch in my legs. Yeah, both guys supremely confident in that one. Before all of that, though, we've got our opening bout this evening. It's Bruno Assis, the White Dragon, the first fight on his karate combat contract. He's taking on a qualifier who hopes to win a contract tonight in Gergu Horvath. 
Yeah, well, Aziz said that he loves to roundhouse kick people in the head <laughs> and use his reverse punch, which is, uh, it's a straight punch in karate. Uh, is it going to work? We're going to find out because Horvat, he's the youngest fighter on the roster, and this guy is a Kyokushin fighter. That means it's the hardest form of karate. He's going to use his experience and his power, and he wants to come fast out of the gate. So those are the first two fighters entering the pit tonight. Let's lock in those selections. I'm training a lot. I improve my movements, my skills, and I have certainly I surprise everything with watching my fight. In this event, I probably improve my skills and I use the best fighter in the night. The dragon, wake up! Yes. Absolut készen állok a ringben bunyózni igazából bárki ellen. Sokkal tapasztaltabb ellen felek ellen is helyt rokáni. Úgy érzem, nem igazán ijedek meg senkitől. Ez csak most így előtte van, ott bent nem lesz kegyelem. The first two fighters to step pit side. Gregor Horvath in the blue corner and Bruno Assis in the red corner. Man, I can't wait to see if Assis can actually use his high kick against a game Horvath. How fired, up, how fired up does Bruno Assis look? Yeah, stoic in the corner is yes. the Hungarian. Corner tail of the tape for Bruno Assis. You see that 1 and 0 record winning that bout and that contract at our Karate Combat Evolution event. In the blue corner, Gege Horvath from Hungary. And his opponent, the tail of the tape for Gergu Horvath. He is just 20 years old, fighting for his contract tonight. And if he wins, Bas, he will be the youngest fighter on our roster. Ooh, super excited. A lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. Enter the beat. Bas Bruno Assis talking to his opponent across the other side of the pit. Gamesmanship from the start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our referee's going to get this one underway. Are you ready, sir? Are you ready? Let's fight! Three minutes on the clock in this opening bout. Touch of gloves. White pants for Bruno Assis. Black pants for Gergu Horvath. Straight into the southpaw stance. We're switching back and forth, actually. And a nice early body kick from Assis. Oh, nice right roundhouse kick. He didn't push it through, though. Got straight up over the guard early oh, there and a slip. Five, five seconds. Three, yes. Two, one, oh, and he's tied him up very nicely inside the yeah. guard there. That's going to kill the action straight away. Harvard should have dropped his butt and then he could have tripped him. Horvath pushing forward with a lot of aggression here. No feeling out period. No, there's Bas. no feeling out period. And it's just weird. Ooh, he walked on a stiff jab right there. And it's Suki. It's a straight punch. I thought that Horvath was going to come much closer because oh. that one, another right hand landed. I yeah, see he's doing a great job with his striking. I love that. Staying in the pocket, just throwing hell for leather. You see, and normally in the pocket fighting, that's a Kyokushin style fighting, but he's further away from his opponent. Well, Gergu Horvath coming into this one, 20 years old, but 40 previous bouts under various rule sets. A lot of experience. Yeah, a nice high kick as well. You can see, though, again, that it's that he put karate to the kick there. He should have pulled it through. Push a little bit more through it, and it will knock him out. Bruno Assis, the former three-time Brazilian university champion, wrapping up his degree in computer oh, automation. Nice. nice counter there. Got the kick from Horvath. Oh, referee to the side. Got, yeah, got to separate the clinch. Fight. Aggression so high on the Karate Combat scorecards, and Bass, both of these guys, not backing down an inch. Yeah, and you know, single kicks, I'm not a big fan of that. I would always set it up with a striking combination. That, like that. Yeah, good to always end those Ooh, punching combinations. Ooh, shot there. With a kick. <laughs> I, I love that. that. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Who do you feel is throwing the more technically sound strikes right now? I think it's Assis. He connected also a whole bunch more. Good hook from Horvath, though. Caught the guard. Yep. Oh, and that was a nice jab, that lead left. Oh, Caught nice. him again. Yeah. 
He's taken over now. Oh, oh. not the net straight points. That's a single kick I always talk about. Don't throw it. Bass, can you believe we're barely two minutes in? Man. 35 seconds left on the clock in this one. They're going to need that minute's rest soon. Oh, again, nice slip of the head to yeah, yeah, yeah. right. That was nice. Every time when Horvath throws a right head, he puts his face offline. I'd say the judges got their work out already. Every time one guy lands, the other one comes straight back. Clean shots all around. I see should throw a right head with the right roundhouse kick. That was a and, good job. And then clean I think that Horvath's got to dip right into it. Horvath almost looking for a double like that. <laughs> see, he moves his face every time to the left. Oh, he slips off line so yeah. nicely. So, but you know, if you follow it up with the right kick, if I see would do that, he will bop his head into the kick. Look at that. Oh, nice uppercut. That's right. the end. Yeah, right at the end of the first round. So much action. You see the welt on the side of Gurku Horvath pass. Yeah. His rib cage just bruised up. Let's take a look at some of the replays from that opening round. Here we go, so much to pick apart, oh. just skimming the head. Yep, that was nice though. That one he pulled through. Nice stomping kick. Bruno Assis landed some clean shots. He did really great at pushing the, the front kick to the side and then coming forward. And there you see the welt on the, the rib cage of all oh, that. Look at that, that's off a single kick. It's you know, the most open when you do that. And that's the problem, right? Bash, you throw the kick, you don't keep your hands that's up, it. you're gonna get pinked. Yep. So I'm going to take a quick look into the red corner of Bruno Assisi. Some blood on the face there, taking some big shots himself, but he gave as good as he got, Bass. Well, a little blood there, but come on. Hey, it's not a fight if there's not blood, right? Yeah, all credit to these two guys putting everything on the line. They know what's at stake. Assis is trying to prove that contract is worth it. Horvath trying to earn a contract himself. Referee gets us underway. Three more minutes of action on the clock. All right. Oh, nice back into the body there. What oh, nice long jab. Oh. you got to say, Bass, that, that straight jab has been a good weapon for a CC yep. take down here. Two. Two. Tries to invert into a guard position. Five. Of course, Bass, five seconds to work with straight strikes only on the ground. No hammer fist, no ridge hands. So you've really got to clear those legs out of the way, get over the top of your opponent. Yep. Nice right high kick there by Assis again. Do you feel perhaps momentum starting to go the way of Assis here? He's, he's forced Gurgu into a couple of tie-ups now. Well, Assis did really good at round number one, and at the end of round number one, I think that uh, Horvath came forward. But then again, he got hit with that big shot. Now Assis is constantly coming forward. So if he continues, oh, look at that liver kick. That's a left kick to the body. That was a hard one. Yeah, right up the open side oh. of Horvath, and he's staying in the pocket oh, here. It's a big right hand. Stop, stop, stop. And the referee, the referee stopped this one. Up. Bruno Assis wow. moves to his second victory in the karate combat as he takes the kneeling position in the corner, and Gergu Horvath, our qualifier, laid out on the pit floor. That was a hard shot. Yeah, no, a vicious flurry, wasting no time following up. Let's take, let's take a look at the replay here of this knockout pass. Talk us through it. Well, that says it all there. Oh, yeah, that big right hand. And you saw the leg, the neck was relaxed. Hit it to the side. You want to talk about this one. accuracy of successive oh. punches? It's on the punch, it's on the, on the jaw, and that's why he's got all that leverage. And there we see a very upset Gergu Horvath, I'm sure, wearing those war wounds. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is with TKO, the red Bruno Assis. A well-earned victory for Bruno Assis. You can just see how much that means to him to move further up the rankings here at Karate Combat. As he celebrates in the middle of the pit. Gergu Horvath, still young bass. We're going to have to see if he can earn himself another shot at a Karate Combat contract. Bruno Assis is going to head up the pit wall now, and he's going to join. He's going to join our hostess, Leila Anna Lee. Bruno, amazing to speak to you. Congratulations! What a wonderful way to open the show. So much aggression from the off. Was that always the plan? Oh, I'm very happy because the fight. I trained so hard for a long times for this moment, and this is my dream inside the pit. I do everything I have inside of me in the pit. And I'm very happy. I would like to say thank you for everybody, for everything. 
you had an incredibly high pace, very fast fight from the off, and your opponent matched you with that pace. Um, any words on your opponent tonight? Well, my opponent is very, very strong, very, very, very hard to fight, and uh, I'm training more this time in the win. But I have certainly my opponent is very, very good and have a great career in the future. We look forward to it. Thank you very much. Congrats. Thank you very much. Yes. Our winner. Bruno Assis. Let's take a look back at how Bruno locked in that victory, Bass. Here's the highlights of the fight. There we go, some good straight kicks. And Assis really started to swing the momentum towards the end of that first round, yep. Bass. Yeah, that's what he was doing. Once he found it, and a long left jab in the face. Nice high kick, but the single kick he throws that punch there as well. It was really the story that he kept surging forward, didn't he? And that was what led to the knockout, successive shots. That's it. You know, that last punch there that really sealed the deal was on the button. Look at this. One, two, and this one. It's also that killer instinct to immediately follow up, stepping straight over the legs. Referee really didn't need to see too much of that. That's the first fight in the books. Join us back pitside in just a few moments for our next bout. Me gusta empezar mi día entrenando aquí, me da paz. A veces la ciudad puede volverse un tanto caótica, así que disfruto el silencio de este lugar. Bueno, vengo desde abajo, mi familia no tenía mucho dinero, así que tuvo que emigrar para buscar trabajo. A los nueve años encontré a karate, encontré a mi sensei, y ellos me ayudaron a ser la persona que soy hoy. El karate me abrió muchas puertas, me permitió estudiar, me permitió prepararme, me enseñó cómo manejar mi vida y me mantuvo lejos de problemas. Bueno, crecí en uno de los peores barrios de Quito. Eh, al convertirme en atleta de alto rendimiento, con eso mejoró mi economía, pude salir de ese lugar, pude mudarme a un lugar mejor, un lugar de clase media, que ahora es del cual disfruto. Okay. Desde pequeño siempre me gustó la historia, me gustó la geografía, la historia sobre guerra, eh, la historia sobre estrategia. Me gustó mucho lo que, la estrategia que se utilizó para ganar la Segunda Guerra Mundial, para ganar la guerra de Irak. Eso me llamó mucho la atención y trato de aplicarlo eso día con día. Gracias. La estrategia para mí es importantísima. Trato de conectar la estrategia de la guerra con mi estilo de pelea. Porque si no tienes estrategia, no puedes ganar. He ganado cada título que me he propuesto, cada medalla. Lo único que quiero ahora es la adrenalina de Karate Combat y quiero ese cinturón dorado. Ok, ¿cómo te lo explico? Tomas un trozo de carbón, lo sometes a mucha presión y ¡bam! Tienes un diamante. Ese soy yo, un diamante negro. Welcome back to the Wasteland. We've had one fight already and one knockout. Bass, you cannot ask for more. Let's take a look at what's still to come today. Still that main event, the pit bull, Luis Roca and Elias Mardi. But next, we're going to take a look at the great Stefan Rupakos taking on the black diamond, Daniel Viveros. Let's head it over to the fight selector, lock in these fighters. Βλέψουμε για να πετύχουμε το όνειρό μας. Δεν υπάρχει χρόνος για ξεκούραση, για χαλάρωση. Πρέπει να δουλεύουμε, πρέπει να είμαστε πολεμιστές, να είμαστε μαχητές. Que todo mundo sepa quién es Black Diamond, que todo mundo vea que yo soy el mejor. Por eso vengo con todo a quien esté delante mío, me lo voy a llevar por delante. Necesito ganar y convertirme en el nuevo campeón también.
portal they come. Stefano Rapakos in the red corner, Daniel Viveros in the blue corner. Rupakos is going to try to push the fight and Viveros will use his reach advantage. Let's see if it's going to work out. There we see tail of the tape for Stefanos Rupakos, former Greek amphibious special forces. As you can see there, Daniel Viveros 0-2 on karate combat, but that is not the whole story. He had fantastic showings against some great competitors, and he's really looking forward to getting that first win tonight. Fighters, enter the beat. What's it going to right? Round one, you ready? You ready? Round one. Referee brings them together, and we are underway. Touch of gloves. White pants for Rupakos, black pants for Viviros. Bass just trying to get that range set early. Open stance, so you're going to see inside kicks, which is a very dangerous thing to do because you cannot kick the thighs, you have to kick the lower, so you're going to hit shin on shin. So we have seen somebody break a shin bone before, so I don't think they're going to throw. Yeah, interesting stance uh, clash here. Open sides facing each other. Of course, the southpaw for Viveros. I always, you know, straight to the body, right front kick. So for the southpaw, that is left front kicks are very effective. Uppercuts for both these guys are very effective. And just know that whatever one guy can do, the other can do in mirror image. Rupakos has had a pretty quiet six months. He said to us earlier that getting this fight against Viveros was the motivation he really needed to kick his training back into high gear. That was nice there, Viveros. And the sidekick, Yoko Giri, as they call it. Very tight on those punches from Viveros. Got that left hand nice and high bass, really rolling that shoulder up. Yeah, he's smart. He's doing good. He's blading also. It's a thinner target for the front kicks. Switching stance here by Rupakas now. He's going to a southpaw as well. Take down, beautiful. Oh, oh, take down. Oh, oh, oh. He's got. And Daniel Viveros, lethal with the finish. Man. Less than a minute oh, yeah, and a no. half in, and Rupakos can barely stand up as the referee saves him. I think the takedown did I, it I already. Need to see, need to see we a need replay. to see the replay. It looked like he knocked him out on the takedown. Yep. Bass, let's see what happened there, because they tied up, short shot. Body lock. Oh, and that's... Yeah, that's, yeah, he's out. I'm curious, though, is that that's not a legal takedown under karate combat rules. It's a double body lock from a clinch. You can't commit both hands to a takedown under our current rule set. You can just catch a kick and sweep the leg. You see, that was some hard landing from Rupakos. Wow. For his opponent, obviously, not wanting to hurt his opponent outside of the context of the bout. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is with Tekio, the blue Daniel Viveros. What a fantastic win for Daniel Viveros. Congratulations, a fantastic win. Putting a win on your record there as well. What did that mean to you? ¿Qué significa para ti poner haber ganado y poner esto en tu récord? Eh, me siento feliz porque venía de, de una derrota con, con el ruso y tenía que ganar, tenía que ganar por knockout y demostrar lo que lo que yo soy para poder estar aquí con los grandes. Ok, I know uh, I was uh, the last fight was not too, too good for me, but uh, I was ready to take a knockout and win this fight because it was so important for us. Congratulations, well done. Thank you so much. Essa é a história de um garoto pequeno que trabalhou duro, que ama o que faz 
É isso que eu faço. Eu luto, eu jogo o jogo. Meu maior ponto fraco, acho que são as distrações, aquilo que tira o meu foco. E o principal, sem dúvida, são as mulheres. É, eu sei que isso parece engraçado, mas é a realidade. É o que mais me... Durante minha carreira toda foi o que mais me desviou do foco. Eu tive que procurar ajuda, conversei com muitas pessoas, li bastante e consegui fazer reflexões e análises para enxergar meus problemas e eu percebi que o problema estava dentro de mim. Era no meu autocontrole, era responsabilidade minha superar meus demônios. E eu, graças a Deus, consegui fazer isso e hoje eu estou muito mais focado e já não tenho mais distrações, mesmo nesse país lindo que é o nosso Brasil. Ser brasileiro não é apenas ser nascido num país em algum lugar do mapa. Ser brasileiro é, é uma cultura, é, uma, é um sentimento que tem pessoas maravilhosas, homens e mulheres. Eu já fui admirado, odiado e até invejado pelos meus oponentes. Mas isso não importa. A única coisa que importa para mim é a minha mãe. A minha mãe é a minha rainha. Ela sempre acreditou em mim e por isso eu devo tudo que eu sou a ela. Ela tem um pouco de receio de ter um filho lutador. Eu acho que é normal. É uma profissão que causa aflição em qualquer mãe. Mas ela sabe que eu amo fazer isso, que isso é minha paixão. E é isso que eu sei fazer. Eu nasci para isso, então ela tosse e me apoia muito. Hoje eu treino com os lendários irmãos Pitbull. Me faz evoluir bastante. Nós trocamos muitas informações e compartilhamos conhecimento. Isso me faz evoluir muito. Passamos muito tempo criando estratégias e trabalhando na parte técnica. O Patrício tem muitos anos de carreira e traz muita experiência. Ele aponta meus erros e trabalhamos em cima disso. E temos certeza que eu não voltaria a repeti-los. A minha última derrota foi muito difícil para mim. Foi minha primeira derrota, minha única. Mas eu uso isso como combustível. Eu aprendi muito com os erros que cometi naquela luta. Eu lutava em MMA antes e no MMA eu tive vitórias muito dominantes, até, eu diria, com certa facilidade, certo conforto. E eu presumia que no Karate Combat seria igual, mas é um novo esporte, são outros competidores. Eu quero ser lembrado como lutador e como homem. Quero ser um dos grandes. Eu trabalho duro para ser um ícone do meu esporte aqui no Brasil. The Wasteland and Bass, we have just seen a phenomenal knockout from Daniel Viveros and an unusual one for Karate Combat. Let's just fill everyone in on why that was a legal knockout. Daniel Viveros executed a body lock and he executed a takedown off of that body lock without ever touching his opponent's legs. Because he did that in one clean motion, it's a legal knockout and boy did he put an exclamation point on that fight. Wow, yeah, you could tell that his opponent didn't expect that. I mean, he was completely relaxed, his head bounced on the mat and that was it. Those few shots that he was throwing, he didn't even to do it. He didn't need to seal the deal. No, referee very quick on that one. Of course, we've got one more fight coming up today and that is our main event, the championship eliminator, Luis Roca taking your Ilias Mardi and Bass Luis, uh, three and one with Karate Combat. He said in the last fight we saw him against Edgar Scrivas, a little bit of an upset for him. Yeah, he said so, but you know, it taught him a lot. It made him change his fighting style, more powerful. And he said, it's good when somebody's losing because you learn the most from the loss, right? That's ever what everybody says. So, yeah, I think that he's going to come out God's place. Yeah, really looking to come forward, throw that hand continually, but he's got a tough challenge in Ilias Mardi. A guy who, I'll be quite honest, when I spoke to his coach yesterday, said, sometimes I just get frustrated with him because he does what he wants and he might not listen to me. You know, Mardi is one of those guys, yeah, who has a might of their own, you know, but he knows that his opponent is stronger, so he's going to use his speed. He's going to move over all over the place and going to use his speed against the power. Let's see what's going to be victorious, speed and power. It's always better to combine it, speed and power, I say, but here it's separate. What a clash, it is going to be a great fight. Ilias Maldi teve um pouco de azar. Eu estou num momento muito forte, muito bem preparado. E eu tenho certeza que eu vou voltar a vencer agora, me reencontrar com a vitória, me reencontrar com o meu melhor momento. Eu sou Luiz Rocha, o Pitbull, e eu estou aqui para reencontrar a vitória. Je vais combattre contre Luis Rocha qui est plus puissant que moi. Euh, moi j'ai deux victoires à mon actif, j'espère en avoir une troisième, être invaincu pour aller ensuite aller chercher la ceinture. J'ai confiance en mon cardio, en ma vitesse, il a beau être puissant, mais je vais lui enlever l'électricité au premier round.
bit side here. Luis Roca in the red corner and Elias Marty in the blue. Oh, let's see if Roca can, as he said, show his real power and Marty show his speed. In the red corner, Luis Roca, the people from Brazil. Age and experience on the side of Luis Roca. You see there the three and one record. He's also 31 years old, a little bit older than his opponent tonight. In the blue corner, Elias Marty, the man. Nine years younger is Ilias Mardi at 22 years old. Undefeated on karate combat. All the reach and height bass, a complete wash. Let's fight! Here we go. He's an energizer bunny. Both these guys yeah. are the whites. It's going to be a high paced fight. We're wasting no time whatsoever here. Black pants for Ilias Mardi, white pants for Luis Roca. Roca fainting early with the head there. Nice high guard. Very smart. I would like to see that more often by more fighters. Faints, lifting a leg. You know, just set your opponent off. Bass Roca seeming a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what Marty was talking about. He knows his opponent is stronger than he is, but he says, I'm going to use my speed against him. This, of course, is a top. Oh, there we go. Surging forward. There's a clinch. They look to off balance each other, get a little bit of, uh, little bit of an upper hand early. Brotherly love. This is, of course, a title eliminator. Whoever wins this gets a shot at one of our coveted karate combat golden belts. Marty moving around the outside here. Good lateral movement. Yeah, very smart. Very smart. He needs to let his opponent throw some strikes, whatever it is, punches, kicks, you know, get used to his distance. And once he founds it, which is pretty much identical as his, then start countering. Roka switching his stance Ooh. about briefly. That was a nice kick there to the dive, uh, to the Logan. See how Marty just barrels forward there, yeah. dives his head down, throws those punches. Well, he's just uh, sparring rounds with the Pitbull brothers. So <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to be afraid of anything. You know, it's interesting. Roka said he didn't really see anything dangerous uh, with his opponent and said if Marty hasn't evolved, he is going to get knocked out. I has to watch out, though. He gets a little bit... Too much confidence is never good, right? Absolutely. It looks to him that Marty is running, but Marty is not running. He is just measuring and waiting for the right spot. Never think that your opponent is afraid because, oof, pride. I will take everything Roker down. is doing a good job here, though, of controlling the center of that pit. It is a criteria the three judges are looking at, yep. but it's a little bit lower on the spectrum than aggression, which is the thing we value most here at Karate Combat. Roka doing a good job cutting off those angles now, though. Jumping side kick. Just getting the hang of trying to shut Marty down a little bit, a little bit quicker. It's nice. He's doing a good job. Into the last minute here, just 40 seconds left on the clock. It's three threes if they need them. <laughs> You ever offered an opponent out like that, Bass? Well, that's, you should hit the head. When the hands go up, hit the head. They expect you to hit the body or kick the body. Do the other way around. Oh, I thought that was almost like a crucifix-like <laughs> move. <laughs> yeah, tying up again against the pit wall. You've got to say, so far, Bass, nobody really landing anything particularly decisive. No, but you know, the rules say that the person who attacks will be favored over the guy that counters and moves backwards. Oh. So do you feel that perhaps the judges are looking at Rocha as being the aggressor throughout this? Exactly. Yep. Time. Yep. That is the first round. Complete Roka and Marty putting on a good show there, but still perhaps Bass, a little bit of a feeling out process, not trying to commit too heavily too early. You know, I think it's a very smart thing what Marty is doing. And I tell this all uh, to my, my students who just start fighting. I say, move back, move back, move back. Let your opponent think that you try to avoid the game because then they start getting aggravated. Slowly but surely they start loading up the punches. Now they start telegraphing. You see, and he already started messing with him, uh, Rocha. He started bringing his hands up. So it's interesting you say that because Roka's had a bout uh, on Karate Combat before where an opponent just stayed away, stayed away, and it frustrated him a little bit. I wonder if Marty's seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Round two. Round two. Fighters back down into the pit, and Roker is looking to close the distance quick across here. The referee having to send him back. I think Marty will start fighting now. 
more than he did in the world number one. Yeah, I got the go. impression when I spoke to him, Bass, that Marty likes to see what his opponent's going to do oh, and then decide how to attack. He connected that with a nice right. Of course, those kicks in Karate Combat having to stay either very low or very high. No kicks between the hip and knee. If I've got to target that calf or target the body and head. Roka still looking to press forward here. And Mardi immediately Whoa, for a clinch, so that's a nice. big takedown. Inside leg grip, beautiful. You can feel the tension between these two bats. They both want to beat the other up so badly. But you see, Roka really wants to come forward. To forward. He, he wants to get it over with. And Marty is elusive. Moving back, moving back. Happy to take his time a little bit more. Yeah, but he needs to start attacking because if this round is the same as round number one, he's going to lose the fight if he doesn't finish it in the third. Yeah, absolutely. Perhaps on the back foot a little bit too much to have scored heavily. That overhand right missing, forcing another clinch here. And remember, in the opening of this round, he landed a big right hand. Left hook and Rocha, good counter strike on the way in. And you see that's lit a little bit of a fire under him. Rocha just starting to get the timing of Mardi down a little bit more now. We've got one minute left in this second round. Mardi should move back and explode forward. Yeah, perhaps use that cage wall when he gets backed up against yeah. it. And Roger just needs to cut him off, but it's very hard with that wall because everybody's using it now. To uh, catch the kick off balance forward. I'd love to have seen Rocha just briefly break there and before Marty can regain his balance, hit one of those straight shots in. Pass those large spinning kicks, sometimes a little bit easy to see coming if there's nothing set up before. Yeah, you and, and, and the spinning, okay, I can, I can see that as a single kick, but you're going to have to lure your opponent in, you know, let him come, uh, open up something, maybe your head, you know, so he comes in for the attack and then make the spin. Moving into the last 10 seconds here, who's going to put the exclamation point on this round? Roka still pressing forwards. Oh, good left hand and some gamesmanship from Marty, and that's the end of the second. Wow. Yeah, well, Marty did more. Was it enough, though, Bass? Yeah. Was it enough? He did land that big, bite, uh, big right hand, and maybe in the, because it was early in the round, he thought that uh, he got it sealed with that, but he didn't. They're going to take their second break out. in the corners here. Let's take a look at some of the replays from that second round of action. Bass, a lot of these exchanges the same. That was the first clinch uh, takedown we saw. Yep. Oh, nice inside trip from done. Roka. I love it. But Bass, the judges, a lot to look at there with two rounds down. If you had to guess, who's up on the scorecards here? Well, I would say Rocha because, you know, he's he's pushing the fight more and it's the criteria and in the rules that whoever pushes the fight will get more awards than the one who's countering and moving backwards so the aggressive fighter gets rewarded yeah effective aggression is the name of the game we're into the last three minutes here and again roca takes the center of the pit mardi a little bit less elusive now in that corner Spinning back fist, closing the distance again. Marty's got to get some counter strikes going on those exchanges. It's a new range finding technique for you, Bass? Yeah, it's kind of weird, right, what he's doing? <laughs> uh, oh, yes. He, nice left hook landed there by Marty. Marty explodes for the first time in this round. Again, forcing the clinch. And Bass, you've got to love that when they clinch, they are looking to just one up the other. Yeah, and he went on top, but uh, Roka very smart, locking his hands. 
So he can't rain down the strikes. There we go. I thought we were going to see another inside leg flip there. Can you believe it? We've still got two minutes left in this round. Corner of Roca screaming instructions at him. I don't speak Portuguese, Bass, but it seems like there's a bit of a sense of urgency there. Yeah, but you know what? He's doing good. I think that he wants him to take him out. Again, Marty just missing the mark there. Yeah, again, so, just just again. so strong in that clinch. Yep. Come on, turn around. Ready, fight! Both these guys training for the majority of their life. Roka starting karate at six years old, seven years old for Ilias Mardi, making his home in Paris now, the son of uh, Moroccan immigrants. This is one of the ways that he helps support and contribute to his family back home. Last 40 seconds here, and that is a huge exchange. Bass, does Roka look like he's having fun to you? Yeah, well, it's frustrated to me, it looks like, right? Yeah, I mean, just a but he's, smile. But, but he's doing enough to win. Well, so, that's, that's it, yeah. If you, if you are conscious of that fact, you know, it's an interesting, how do you play the last 30 seconds? Do you take any risks to get that knockout? Well, he does, and, and like he said, before the fight, he wanted to show that he, his real power that he hasn't shown yet. So I think he's just frustrated, he wants to take him out. He has landed a couple of very nice counter left hooks as Marty's surged forward. Last five seconds here. Oh, and, well, that's a, that's a little bit suspect at the end there, yeah. but it was good follow-up off a kick. And the round is over. That is the end of this fight. The full nine minutes needed in this one. And Roka raises his hands in the air. He thinks he's done enough. Bass, are you inclined to agree? Yes, because, again, the rules are stating that the aggressive fighter is going to get it. And that's what he did. He's pushing. He was pushing the whole time. Well, it's a rare occurrence here in the scrapyard so far for us to go to the judges' cards, but we're going to do it this time. Let's take a look at some of the replays of that third round. Boom. Well, that was a great striking combination there for Marty. And again, Bass, the story of the whole fight, really, that clinch and just trying to get a little bit of an edge in that, in that entanglement. Yeah, there, Marty did the inside leg too. Let's throw it down into the pit where our referee is going to announce our winner. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is, with an anonymous decision, the Red Luis Roca. A lot of respect shown between both fighters there and their corners, but Bass, just like we suspected, the pit bull, Luis Roca, continues on his winning ways here at Karate Combat. Yeah, he did a great job, you know, he did could not show his secret power that he was talking about, and I think that frustrated him a little bit. Uh, but Marty was what he said he was going to do, very elusive. He was moving backwards the whole time. I thought it was a game plan in round number one, and then round number two he would come in and move forward, but he never pulled the trigger to constantly come forward. Yeah, perhaps just not able to adapt late in the game there. Let's throw it over to our hostess, Leila Anneli, who's going to talk with the pit bull, Luis Roca. Congratulations, you came out full of aggression and controlled that pit from the off. Was that in the game plan? Uh, thank you. Uh, it was a good fight. My opponent is very fast and in your strategy is Rooney, Rooney and surprised me. But uh, I am very good training and uh, nothing that the uh, host can do, uh, can do uh, touch me. That was, of course, touted as a title eliminator, which means you're now ready for the title fight next. How does that make you feel? Uh, I think uh, I am the, the official challenger to the belt because uh, I have more victories uh, than many fighters of the, the division. And I won this fight, I won this belt, and I'm ready. I want to combat. I am ready to belt. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. And Luis Roca exits the pit there, as you heard in that interview. He is going to be the official contender to challenge for the belt. 
Bass, I am so excited. We now have a legitimate title contender here at Karate Combat in the form of Luis Roca. Let's just take one last look back at that fight. Ilias Mardi, game plan perhaps a little bit awry there. Yeah, the game plan, I thought in the beginning he's going to do that to throw him off. Make him angry, you know, let him start overcommitting. And then in round number two, he's going to start using it to his... Uh, to his favor and start attacking, but he didn't. He kept doing what he was doing in round number one, and that's why he lost the fight. But Roka, of course, all credit to him. Good game plan, well executed, taking the victory. Yeah, very strong guy, you know, and Marty is smart. You want to move away from that power. There were a few times that he side kicked and high kicked, and that Marty was on the way out, and that's why he didn't fully connect. So I also love the inside leg trips that he did. He did twice. Marty actually landed one on him as well. But yeah, Roka is going to be a really good fight against Grievers. Oh yeah, of course. But before that, we had one of the most amazing takedowns we've ever seen on Karate combat. Daniel Viveros knockout takedown over Stefanos Rupakos. Yeah, Viveros, he really needed that. His last two fights, he lost. They were very close, you know, very close decision. But uh, he, they were also against really strong karate cars. So, you know, for a guy like that, his third fight, he really needed to win. And boy, did he win. I mean, that was like 20, 30 seconds. He took him down and that was it. That wasn't our only knockout, though. We had one right at the start of the night. Bruno Assis absolutely sparking Gregor Horvath. Yeah, he did great. He came with a crazy combination, landed a few punches, and then the right hook at the very end, right on the button, dropped his opponent, and he got home with the victory. What a fantastic group of fights we've had here. That is all we've got time for tonight. From the lovely Leila Anneli, Bass Rutten, and myself, Josh Palmer, we'll see you next time in the Wasteland. Oh.